In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you all like to sit down? Great. Recently I read a book about Christianity. I read a lot of books. I'm a bookaholic. But this one was interesting because it was about the early church, the early Christian church. And one thing that struck me was that the author, the writer, hardly ever used the word Christian or Christianity. And you'd think he would in a book about Christianity. But instead of saying the early Christians did that or the Christianity then followed this, he used the term follower. That is, followers of Jesus did this or that. Or followers of the Christ did this or that. Always the term followers of Christ or followers of Jesus. In other words, I figured out the author was constantly impl implying movement, action, and choice. I think the word Christian, which is a noun, as you know, denotes a title, a name, a belief, and that's fine. But follower of Christ, with that word follower, even though follower is a noun, it denotes movement, action. If we're following someone, we can't really be standing still. Now, we're all familiar with the words that end our service on Sundays. The demissal service, sentence rather, where the priest says, let's go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Well, what does this really mean in this context of being a verb rather than a noun? To love and serve the Lord, as I see it, is to love him for what he was and is, and to serve him is to follow, that is, to follow what he taught, to hear and act on his words, to be a follower of Christ, to be in motion rather than static. No more, no less than that. We love him, that is, we value, we cherish, believe, and accept him for the life he lived on this earth in the sense that we value him for revealing himself to our consciousness then and ever since then as the Son of God, the divine person of the universe, the cosmic manifestation of the cosmic God to people here on earth. And the most important thing is that he reveals to us all that we should be. All that we should be. To love a person, we must have respect for that person, of course, and we must listen to them. Well, listening is really a very active idea, I hope. I hope we don't go into a kind of coma when someone's talking to us, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. I know we do sometimes. But normally, hopefully, listening is an activity. We're wanting to know where the person's coming from, what they're telling us, how it changes us, what should be. So to love Christ is not only to love him for being the cosmic and earthly reminder of divinity, but also for what he says to us, what he teaches us, what we should follow, how we should be followers of Christ. It's no less than to heed God's words, as we did today in the Gospel reading in the Transfiguration, where the divine meets the earthly. The earthly Christ goes in and is assimilated with the divine for a moment as the disciples watch. And the divine says to all of us, this is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Listen to him. And it's in this listening and following 
that we ourselves become transfigured, that we ourselves become changed. So we listen and we serve the Lord by following what he says. We follow his teachings because from him we hear the will of the universe, the will of God. We hear, in fact, a blueprint for a perfect world. And when we convert what we hear into our attitudes and deeds, we are moving the world closer and closer to that. We ourselves become transfigured when we forgive others as they forgive us, we hope, and certainly as God forgives us. We transfigure ourselves when we're merciful and loving, never spiteful, revengeful, or mocking. We are transfigured when we are more concerned about people than about things or appearances or personal gain or prestige. If we love and serve the Lord, we don't hide behind pretense, lies, or hypocrisy because we become just too honest for that. We don't judge others or think less of them because their lives or their abilities or income or color are different than ours. We see all people as valuable, not just a select few who happen to be like us. And finally, we do all in our ability to advance the welfare of God's creation and his children and to establish perpetual goodwill on earth. That's a lot, I know. But all of us, all of us were called upon as followers of Christ to do our best to become transfigured ourselves as we follow the way of Christ. We become transfigured to obtain and make real this blueprint for a perfect world. The followers of Jesus brought many changes to history and to the world. But just think what a different and better and lovelier world this would be for all of us if only, yes, everyone, if all people practiced, lived, and followed these teachings of Christ, it would indeed be a transfigured world. Saint Teresa of Avila was a Spanish Carmelite nun who lived in the 1500s, long time ago, and she wrote these words. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands Yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, your are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. Let's remember these words, my friends, as you and I go forth into this world, not only at the end of each church service, but at the, the beginning of every day of our lives, as we go forth to love and serve the Lord as followers, followers of Christ's teaching, and as we do our bit to transform this world. Amen.